What's up, Shredders? My name is Logan, aka Spiderhands. Welcome to an SP Reviews, where today we have ourselves a track from an axe named Relentless Pursuit titled Comfort in Knowing. And if we switch over to here, we have ourselves a track on YouTube. This is the official visualizer for it. We're going to listen through this track from start to finish and watch it, and we're going to hear what we think. We're also going to be scoring the track on um, nine different criteria from vocals all the way through to feels. <laughs> so let's go, let's do this. This is a very different band to what I've heard from Relentless Pursuit in the past. Something has changed. Oh, it had some Revo tales to it. That's cool, actually. It's cool to add those reverbs to it. It kind of sounds like it's an oscillate kind of chamber. We've got like a tapped guitar riff on top there alongside those distant kind of clean vocals and growls because I think that's kind of dope. There's a lot of really cool things happening here both production wise and compositionally performatively. It's a little bit of side chaining from those kicks though, right? Oh, those pedal notes on the gun synths. There's something really unusual going on here, and I'm trying to figure out what it is. It seems like that solo is ascending, and if that is sound design, I don't know who they've got working on this, but that's some really cool stuff. Also feels like my head's squeezing a little bit, I'm not sure why that is. Wow. And I think that piano tone is really interesting at the end. Yeah, this is a very surreal experience for me. It's very different to a lot of the stuff I've listened to from Relentless Pursuit previously. I do appreciate the effort putting into trying something a little bit different. I'm going to talk about this track more, although after I have a look through the scores and the, and the conclusion part. Welcome to my uh, conclusion of this track, my analysis of this track from Relentless Pursuit titled Comfort and Knowing. Now, what do I think this song is about? I think this track is about someone who um, is thankful that throughout all the stuff they're going through, they know that maybe they have like someone there with them to kind of like um, knowing they have your back, whether it's like literally a person or like an object or something that they believe in, or like if it could even be like a higher power, like there's been talk of religion and stuff in previous songs I've heard from Relentless Pursuit. So I'm wondering if this is, comes into like God or something like that as well, I'm not quite sure. But I mean, either way, it, it's fine. I think it's just a really sort of tremendously simple and easy to preset message there with a sense of wholesomeness behind it that kind of integrates really 
neatly with the growly parts in an unexpected way. The growls and like the, the kind of harsh vocal stylings with the rock and metal stuff, especially the metal stuff, typically don't necessarily correlate well with more sort of soothing, caring messages like this. But I think that it really handles itself incredibly well here. I think that there's something really special going on with how those vocals interact with those reverb tails there in the misty forest alongside the imagery of the video with the guitars and drums and stuff like that. How they intermingle with the lyrics and also like swirl around the headphones. You got some sort of cleanish parts there that are sounding pretty good. I really like the vocal technique though in the um and then in the, the, the growlies. I think that we've got like a kind of like a post hardcore kind of style to some of those clean bits as well. I think it can be good to underdo it, if that makes sense, to not give too much away to show a potential exasperation or like a struggle that you're going through to make it more sort of believable. That's not for me to say that I, I think they're doing fine with their singing. It's more that we're trying to sort of like have spoken kind of melodic stuff as opposed to like having like a straight sort of like clean chorus there, if that makes sense. It's either growlers or we're trying to sort of like I'm down and down and now that kind of stuff in the background. I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully it does. I think the vocals suit the mood of the track well, the, the genre well. I think that they express the vocals quite neatly or the low stories quite neatly in a way that makes sense. And ultimately, yeah, it's just really satisfying. And I think that with the vocals out of the way and a piece that's quite short, three minutes, you know, we layered it with a whole lot of different elements. Off the bat, it was ferocious with the guitar, bass and drums and stuff like that. You had these interesting sort of like woodwind just kind of panish instruments on the top, kind of making it sound like you were walking through a forest. The, you know, like this track, goes fairly neatly through different sort of sections of it. The transitions between parts of the structure are seamless. And we even have moments to pause and sort of like reflect. And there's not just heaviness all the time there. There's different amounts of weight and levy and intensity there that make it a more interesting experience because of that. If it's the same thing for the whole of the three minutes, even though it's a bit of a shorter track, it's just a little bit too much of the same. So I'm glad that we have that variety there. I think ultimately, if I talk about a few other favorite instruments that I have here, I think that the guitars are tremendous there. There are some really interesting sort of like tapped bits. I think there might have been guitar at some points there, but just the chug of the power chords there and the breadth that they had in the mix there and just the heaviness of them is ferocious. And then that guitar solo kind of thing that I think we had like later on there with a bit of a fuzzy sound to it, it almost seemed a little bit sort of like magical and otherworldly, like we were ascending with it. I thought that was incredibly well handled, you know. I've got no complaints whatsoever about how that was done. I think that, um, it was almost so like it was transcendent, like with the sound of it, if anything else, that's potentially a post-production thing. I didn't overplay though. I thought they phrased things really eloquently. Um, the drums were absolutely ginormous there. There was such a ferocity, but also a wide variety of different grooves and chops there. We never overplayed, even though we there was clearly the capacity to have been able to do so. When you wanted to come down and play things a bit slower to allow the drag of the rest of that part of the song to continue, Ultimately, it's a track where, you know, we, we appreciated the drums and percussion and how they groove, that sense of groove they have with the guitar parts with the chugged power chords, as well as allowing the bass as some like a way to sort of like sit in that low end there. There's a bit of resonance in that solo section. I think that was maybe what was kind of catching me off guard a little bit. I'm wondering if the bass was a bit too pushed in that mid range. But I mean, either way, it's okay. It might have been a stylistic thing, and that's totally fine. Ultimately, the bass played well with the root notes. The chord progressions and stuff like that was providing a sense of pace with the drums. So they were handled well. Again, I think there were these sort of like pan flutish kind of parts in there that are tapped and sort of harmonized neatly as like a high layer on top of everything else there. It made it sound a bit more sort of like mystical or a nice extra bit of color there alongside some of the more sort of prim primal power chords and sort of like blast, kind of blast speedy kind of like double kick kind of things. There was also keys near the end and I thought they were great. I appreciated the fact that we had a clear sense of like pace and we were very competent with both hands there and we fleshed things out really neatly in a way that finished the track nicely and so, sort of summarized the themes we had musically and before I was creating a great way to sort of like end things. It was nice to have that set balance there that um, bell curve kind of peter out at that point there in a very satisfying manner. I think the instruments were played really well within this. I've got no complaints about the actual performance itself. I think that the vocals and the lyrics make sense together. And so it's just like the theme, how that ties together. And when I think about what we're discussing with like the misty elements of the synths and stuff like that, heaviness of the, the, the type of music we're doing with the drums, guitar and bass styles there with the power chords and the fast kind of like uh, unforgiving drums, but also those moments of respite where things kind of go a bit sort of like softer or quieter and you have a moment to sort of like breathe. It is almost like walking through a forest, occasionally being reminded of things and trying to like get, get, get through that. 
knowing that that person is behind you on your side. I think that's a really beautiful thing. And so I think ultimately, when you c c combine the lyrics and the vocals together with the style of the different instruments involved there, the short form piece makes incredibly good value. There's no filler within it. I think that the chord progressions and overall concepts here, as well as the tone of the instruments, is to let that create an aesthetic there, which is very believable, and things are nicely connected, so well done. I don't think there's a note out of place. I mean, finally, studio recording mixing and mastering was pretty good for the most part. I think the vocals, I can't tell if the vocals were a little bit quiet in the mix or in just the right place, like the reverb tiles, whether they were trying to sort of insinuate we were in that forest. I think with that in mind, what I really appreciate about this is that you also have, again, a tightness to the drum, guitar, and bass parts. It was a ferociously heavy sounding rhythm section within this. There was a lot of low end kind of oomph there. It sounded great. It reminded me a lot of sort of stuff in late 20. Like it's kind of almost sort of a mirrorish with like some of the lower end stuff with the, with the drop chords. And I think that again, allowing the piano and those sort of like wood, those woodwindy kind of thingies up top there to kind of layer on and peter within the frequency spectrum there with very few resonant frequencies apart from the solo section where that was a little bit intense. But I think that uh, things were nice and white in the stereo field there. I think there was maybe a bit of filtering around the sides. I'm not sure, but the music surrounded you anyways. And ultimately, I think that, uh, you know, it's dynamic range and it was nice and loud without pumping because of the bus compression limiting was handled. I think overall I gave this an 8.1 out of 10, which is an incredibly high score for me. I don't really give those many of those, but I genuinely feel as if this is a track where they ticked a lot of high points. I thought that a lot of the rhythms and, and chord choices and everything like that were great, but I also liked the restraint in certain sections there. There was enough to keep it entertaining and intriguing throughout, and it's just kind of indicative of the growth that Relentless Pursuit has had throughout their time making music, and I'm proud of them. But thank you very much for watching my review of this track from an acting relentless pursuit titled comfort and knowing and hopefully you enjoyed it if you did please go show them some love via the various social medias in the youtube page and stay cool stay safe please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world and i will catch you in the next review spider hands out <laughs>